Hey there, just testing to see that you can hear me okay. How's that sound coming through? Pretty good? Cool. All right, let's go. Thanks for spending time here and welcome to the webinar. Sorry about the delay. A bit of a new system here, so I think we're working out the kinks. So you're here for the Naked Trading webinar. My name is Walter Peters. I wrote the book Naked Forex. I know a lot of you have read it, which is great. So hopefully you'll get to see what we dig in today, uh, dig into today, a very simple naked trading strategy and three ways to trade it. So um, looking forward to showing you how this works. Is there a particular market that you guys would like us to look at? We can use your market as an example because what you'll notice with, as with most naked patterns, they'll happen across time frames. They'll happen across markets. Which one should we use? Anyone have any ideas? Mohit, Susan, Matt, Mark, Guy, Adam, Abdul, what do you like? What kind of market would you like to see us dig into today? Mashni, we can, any, anyone that you want, anyone that you want. So it's up to you basically. Euro, pound, euro, yen, cad, yen, yen. Okay, let's do it. I don't have the Italian. That's the uh, Italian. Um, is that the Italian index? Yeah, that's why I thought. That's why I thought it was. Yeah, no, I don't have that. Let's do the um, the first one through. Was who said that? It was. Uh, Mohit, Mohit, you, you're the winner. So we're, let's do yen. <clears throat> All right. So let me bring up the... Eh, there's the eight-hour yen. Let's do the four-hour yen. Okay. All right. So... First of all, first off, the important thing to note is what the heck is a kangaroo tail? If you're new here, maybe you're watching this video and you haven't you haven't spent a lot of time in these naked forex webinars. That's perfectly reasonable, and that sounds absolutely fine to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight this this spot on the chart. I'm going to call this a support and resistance zone. And I'm going to zoom in so everyone can see. I know it's sometimes a little bit difficult to see. But what I what I want you to notice at in in this in this uh, shaded area is that there are two candles of interest and both of these candles are kangaroo tails. Okay? So this one that I've just identified with the green arrow that's a bearish kangaroo tail and then this one over here that I've identified with the red arrow, we'll make it red, that's a bullish kangaroo tail. So that's the first part that we need to get out of the way. So what is a kangaroo tail? Well, quite simply, some people might call them a doji or a, what's the other term? Pin, pin bar, Pinocchio bar from Martin Pring. Uh, but I've got a special definition because I'm only looking at sp particular uh, uh, pin bars. So not all, of, uh, not all pin bars would be kangaroo tails. So the first thing to notice is that the open and the close of your kangaroo tail in, are inside the previous candle's range. What does that mean, inside the previous candle's range? Or you could just say inside the previous candle, which is what I've done. So if you, again, I'm gonna zoom in here. Well, you can probably see. So this candle prior to our kangaroo tail has a high at 118.55 and a low at 118.15. So it's a 40 pip range, which is not much really for the for a four hour candle, but that, um, that candle contains the open and the close of our kangaroo tail. So the open of the kangaroo tail is at 118.29 and the close is at 118.26. So they're, the, the open and the close are both contained within the previous candle's range. So what that means is that, that this, this candle that I've identified with the, the green arrow, that fits the first criteria that's important for us, which is um, 
that we, you know, that we make sure that it is in fact a kangaroo tail. The second criteria, which is obvious when you see it, but you have to define it somehow. And that is that the open and close are in the bottom third of the candle. Now this is for a bearish candle. If you have a bullish candle like this one over here, we're gonna talk about this one in a moment, um, the open and the close must be in the top third, obviously, for a bullish one. But for a bearish one, the open and the close must be in the bottom third. Clearly, this open and close of this kangaroo tail is in the bottom third. In terms of what is the best time frame for best potential, the easiest time frames are, are usually, for most traders, going to be the higher time frames. So like the daily, the weekly, those are great to start with. And then you can work your way down to the eight hour or the six hour or the four hour as you go. But certainly when you're trading five minute kangaroo tails, you have to pay more attention to all of the other candles around. Whereas when you're trading a weekly chart, you can pretty much just look at the weekly candle and say, "Up, oh, it's a kangaroo tail. I'm going to take a trade here. There are a lot more simplicity when you look at the higher time frames. It also unfolds in slow motion. So you don't have to be so concerned about um, the addiction area of your brain and the addiction area of your brain lights up when you're trading the lower time frame. So it's a little bit tricky to maintain um, really control of your emotions in, in trading your system. But I would definitely recommend daily and weekly to start out with, no doubt. So the open and close in the bottom third or in the top third in the case of a bullish one, right? The next thing that we're going to look at here in terms of defining this, and then we'll get into the advanced, the three advanced methods of, of trading these in a moment. Just want to define this. I know a lot of you know what this is, but I just need to define it for those people watching this video who haven't uh, ever heard of this and don't know what the de definition is. So the third one is that the, the next candle trades lower than the low. Okay. Now, obviously this is for a bearish kangaroo tail. So the candle after your kangaroo tail has to trade lower than the low of the kangaroo tail to trigger the trade. Now we're going to trade, we're going to talk about when we can change this rule and bend the rules here, but this is just for those traders who want to trade the strict by the book method. You'll see an open and close inside the previous candles range the open and close in the bottom third, the next candle trades lower. And obviously you have to see these on a support and resistance zone. So it has to be an area of support and resistance, an area where the market has repeatedly reversed. So it must be on an area where the market's repeatedly reversed. Now I'm going to highlight this in a different color because we are going to break this rule. So we'll break this rule in a moment. I'll show you different ways of doing this. Okay. But that, in essence, is what you're looking for with a kangaroo tail. Does this make sense to everybody? Is this all good? Is there anything weird about this or not so sure or sounds weird? I don't get it. Okay. What time frame do you suggest for best potential? What's your uh, stance on the one hour? Only good for a few hours. All clear. Cool. Um, as far as one hours, um, yeah. So, so the reason why I adjust my charts and when I'm looking for patterns, for example, I was looking at a chart of the, um, someone in the, in my private forum was pointing out a chart and I said, look, I'm actually going to look at it in a different, it was daily and I wanted to look at it on the four hour. And the reason why was because I could see a pattern on the daily, but it was going to show up much nicer on the on the lower time frame. The reason why it's critical for me to identify which time frame the pattern is on is because that's going to determine your targets. So you're right. Um, if you if you look at the one hour um, time frames, you're not going to see as many pips, guy. So it's a good question, guy. You just don't see as many pips potential in general when you're looking at lower time frames. So for example. This, oh, and the stop loss goes on the other side of the, of the um, candle. I should have mentioned that. That's actually <laughs> quite important. <laughs> stop on the other side of the candle, right? It's 
So it's at the high in the case of uh, in the case of this one. So you can see the highs up there at 118.83. That's where the stop goes. All right. So let's just take a look at this one. The risk on this candle is you know 72 pips. And you can see it went all the way down here, went 90, 92, but it also went as many as 150. So it went it went two to one in terms of reward to risk ratio. Uh, if you if this was a one hour kangaroo tail, it'd probably be about 30 or 40 pips max. And you might be looking for, you know, 80 pips. So you you, you can get more if you're looking at lower time frame. Uh, uh, sorry, higher higher time frame. So that's that is a very good point. Um, does the 19th of January can also qualify as a bearish kangaroo tail? 19th of January. This one. Oh, this one, this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay, let's talk about this one. We'll talk about this one in terms of optimizers. So I've identified the zone here as this spot right here on the chart, okay? Now, obviously, what we would have to see is we'd have to go back and make sure that um, if you go back on the chart, this there is support and resistance back here. So you have to go back like this and just see. Oh, yep, yeah, look at that. The, the market remembers. Isn't that magic? The market came all the way down here just for a couple candles, touched it, and then went away and stayed away. Uh, isn't that interesting? So, yeah, and it did it again over here. So, clearly, this is a spot where the market has moved away and let me guys let me ask you guys a question why or why not would this be a kangaroo tail this one right here is does that qualify as a kangaroo tail yes or no and i'll take a sip of water as your answers come through yep that's right yeah, Mohit, Diep, you got it. Exactly. So it's not. And the reason why it's not is the, the um, remember our rules, the open and the close, are they inside the previous candle's range? No. The open is inside the previous candle's range, but the close is not. Um, are the open and the close in the top third of the candle? No doubt they are. Did the next candle trade higher than the the kangaroo tail? No, the next candle actually went lower. It never took out the high of this bullish kangaroo tail. It doesn't really matter that that the open is higher than the close. It can still be a bullish kangaroo tail even though it's red. Okay, so that's not that important. But um, all uh, it is on a zone, so that the head of the kangaroo is up here and the tail's down here. It sits on this zone nicely. But for two reasons, we would not qualify this as a kangaroo tail. One is the next candle didn't take out the high. And two is the close is not inside the previous candle's range. So that would not be a kangaroo tail. Okay, cool. Let's go back to where we were. Thanks for your answers, guys. I really appreciate that. And it helps other people too who are, you know, new to this. So basically, um, these are the rules. Now, this kangaroo tail qual it qualifies. It has all of these things. And it went down to this level down here. Now, depending on where you had a zone drawn in here, maybe this was your target down here, and it went a little bit further than that. Uh, you know, maybe you had a target down here. If you had taken this trade and you didn't take any profit when it came down here and you moved to break even, for example, you definitely would have been stopped out when it came back up here to the zone. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, let's talk about this one. I'm going to color this arrow, I don't know, uh, purple. We'll talk about this purple one. The reason why this is not such a good kangaroo tail is a couple of things. It's really more about uh, where it is and the optimizers. So technically, let's go through our rules. The open and the close are inside the previous candle. The open and the close are on the bottom third. The next candle trades lower than the low. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, this is a bearish one, right? It's on a support resistance zone. That's where we fail here, okay? This one, uh, and the stop goes on the other side of the candle. This one is not, and one of the, this is actually one of the biggest mistakes I've noticed that traders make when they trade kangaroo tails. They see the little tiny ones like this and they get really excited. What I found in my testing is that the little ones are less likely to work. 
Let me state that another way. Um, when your stop loss is closer to your entry price with the kangaroo tail, it, it usually means that you're more likely to get stopped out. Um, so, and in, in some ways that seems pretty obvious, I guess, to some people, but the important thing that I want to get across here is that just because, you know, it's such a small candle, it doesn't mean it's a good one. And so I would much rather trade this one right here with the green arrow on it than this one over here. The real reason why it falls apart here though is because the tail, and this is related to the size of it, the tail didn't actually penetrate and go beyond the zone. So depending on where you have the zone drawn, if you have it, if you have it drawn right here, somewhere around here, you know, the tail didn't actually go through the zone. And what, what I love to see is the head on one side of the zone, which is the direction you, met, you expect the market to go, in this case down, and then the tail on the other side of the zone. That's really ideal for this sort of setup. Um, so there you go. So, so that's, hopefully that makes sense in terms of that little one right there, okay? Now let's talk about the next one. I'm just hitting the F12 key here and advancing my charts. This one's a bullish one. Open and close are inside the previous candle's range. Open and close in the bottom third. The next candle does it, uh, sorry, top third. The top third, not the bottom third because it's a bullish one. The next candle actually trades higher. It's on a support and resistance zone. And the stop is on the other side and it goes up. Now, the issue really, the real question about this one is, is it on the zone or is it below the zone? And that's going to depend on where you draw your zone. If you draw it down here, it's a pretty solid one. But if you draw it up here another 20 pips higher, it's probably not that good, right? And one of the reasons why I don't like taking kangaroo tails that are beyond the zone is because it's a, it's a very common pattern when the market breaks through a zone, it'll come back up and touch that zone and then keep going. Uh, so you have to be careful of that. In fact, I have a system, the Acapulco trade, that's just designed to take advantage of that particular familiar pattern, which is a, a breakout and a retouch. So in essence, I would say that your, um, you know, your kangaroo, the best kangaroo tails are going to have, are going to look like this. They're going to have the head on one side of the zone and the tail is on the other like that, just like that right there. That's really what you're looking for. Um, so depending on where we draw the zone, if we draw it like this, then this is a pretty good candle. But then this one over here now doesn't become that good anymore, right? Because the candle is way beyond the zone. And again, what we want to see, again, focusing on the bearish one over here, we want to see something like that. We have the head on one side of the zone and the tail is on the other. That's really the best sort of kangaroo tail. Okay. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? Now I want to get into the advanced method of entering. If there aren't any questions, we're going to move on and we're going to go into an, the advanced uh, way of getting into these things. All right, cool. So let's go. Uh, huh. All right. Here's one right here. And let's just, let's not, um, let's not concentrate on the, on the candle. What I want to, what I want you to concentrate on this one right here is on the, the candles around this one. Okay. So if you're looking at a kangaroo tail, which is marked here with this purple arrow, it's a bullish one, right? Open and close in the top third, open and close inside the previous candles range. It's on a support and resistance level. The head's on one side, the tail's on the other. Now, what I want you to focus in on is the candle before it. What you'll notice is that the candle before it went all the way down to 120.63. That's how far it sort of dug into the kangaroo tail, right? Kangaroo tail, of course, went further. And one of the things that I should have mentioned um, is that when you're taking kangaroo tails or, or any really naked pattern, really, um, you, you other than the pogo trade uh, or maybe the acapulco is also not that well. The acapulco also, but you you want to see trades where there's some room to the left. And the best way I can illustrate this is by taking this much of the candle which prints on a unique area of the chart where the in other words these candles didn't go there and then you pull it across the chart and see are there is there any price action in that area and the answer is no that's a really really good sign that this is probably going to be a good reversal 
Uh, and the reason why is these reversals tend to happen on these spots in the chart where the market hasn't been for a long time. It's usually where the market moves away. It hasn't been there a long time, so it just takes off. So that's something that I would point out that's important, that if you uh, want to trade the very best reversals, make sure that they have room to the left, space to the left. That's critical. Now this candle right here, again, we said it went down to, where did it go? One down to 120.63. So if I wanted to use an advanced entry, I'm gonna write that number here, 120.63. I could just take, put my order above the high and wait for the next candle to trigger that, like normal. Remember we said it's a kangaroo tail as soon as the next candle trades higher than the high or lower than the low in the case of a bearish one. But, it, but we could just do that and that's the safest way that will give the highest win rate. But if I wanted to get tricky and if I wanted to tighten up my stop and instead of having a stop that was approximately 62 pips away from my entry price, I could actually have a stop that's about 30 pips. So I could literally cut my stop in half and double my risk to reward ratio if I wanted to, by simply putting an order in that's about at the same area as the candle before. Now I call this candle to the left of the kangaroo tail the, the leg, the left leg, and then the right leg is the one that prints after the kangaroo tail. Now we don't know how far it's gonna retrace into the kangaroo tail, but a good bet is to assume that it's gonna go about as far as the other one did. So if it goes to 120.63, I might put my order in at 120.66 or 120.69 or something like that because I'm expecting it to go about the same distance. Does that make sense? You can do 50%, but, um, but that's not always the case. So what I'm looking for is some, is some uh, symmetry in the pattern. And what you'll notice when you hit the F12 key here is you have that. This next candle actually went all the way down to 120.64. So it went, it went within a pip of where it went the first time. So the first leg, the left leg went to 120.63. This one went to 120.64. So if you had that order in at 120.69, you get triggered. I'm not saying that you should put it exactly where the low is of the left leg or the high in the case of a bearish kangaroo tail. All I'm saying is it gives you a rough estimate of where it might go. Does that make sense? This is called the leg entry because you're using the left leg to identify what you would like to happen on the right leg. Now, you can, if you want, play both, play both hands. So it might not retrace, right? Sometimes it doesn't retrace that far and doesn't trigger you in. So if you put your buy order above the high of the kangaroo tail, you can let that one go too, just in case you miss out on the entry, right? You could have that order above the candle, a buy stop a few pips above the high of the candle as well but the leg entry would be expecting about a parallel retracement. Does that make sense to everyone? Is everyone clear on that? Is that pretty straightforward? That's the leg entry. Remember, you will always get stopped out more often when you use a leg entry. If you use a buy stop above the high of this bullish kangaroo tail, a lot of the trades that would, you know, a lot of the situations that would go bad for you, um, you miss out on. Because if the market just keeps falling here it, it, and never gets high enough to trigger your order, you're okay. But if you use a leg entry, you're going to get triggered. It's going to trigger you every time and you're going to get stopped out every time too. So you will have a lower win rate, but you, but you make up for that when you have the higher reward risk ratio. Okay? So that, that makes sense. So let me show you, for example, if you were looking at, uh, I just saw one. Here you go. Let's say that you were looking at this candle right here. Now, I don't. I don't think this is a very good one at all uh, because it doesn't have any space. We were talking about space before. If you tried to pull the amount of this candle that's unique to the left, it would immediately run into these candles over here, right? So the open and the close are also not in the, in the, in the previous candles range, but this candle doesn't have any space. It doesn't stick out. It's not by itself. It should really be up here where these candles are and stick out up there. But if you wanted to trade a leg entry on this one, you might put your order in, what's the high on this one? 122.81. So maybe you put the order in at 122.78 you know, or 122.77, something like that. And guess what? 
it's going to get you triggered. What's the low here? Yeah, 122.75. So it triggers you and then goes up, sits up here for a couple candles and stops you out over here. So you get stopped out. But if you had a sell stop below the bearish kangaroo tail, you never get triggered. Does everyone see that? You will always have a higher win rate in almost every instance if you don't use the leg entry. Cool. All right. So this is making sense. No, no big dramas or anything like that. Everything's pretty straightforward. Excelente. Okay, cool. All right. If there aren't any questions about the leg entry, I'm going to move on. But I just want to make sure that everyone's up to date and this all makes sense. Leg entry, high risk to reward, low win rate. Normal entry, uh, low, lower risk, risk to reward, but higher win rate. So you got to choose. Do you want to win more often or do you want to win big <laughs> and not win as often? It's basically what it comes down to, right? Okay. Now, let's talk about some more advanced style of, of kangaroo tail trading. One thing I want to highlight here is there's, there was one over here. There it is. Okay. So let's say that we were looking at uh, um, let's say that we were looking at this kangaroo tail. It's not really a kangaroo tail because the open and the close are not inside the previous candles range. So by definition, it's not. But let's just say that you know, we were looking at this. Let's say for some reason it it had this previous candle had a little bit of a higher wick and it included the close of this kangaroo tail. One of the th one of the things that happens sometimes is you'll get a kangaroo tail like this, and the very next candle uh, is also a kangaroo tail. And people often ask me, they say, Walter, you know, what do I do in this case? Well, my answer is it depends. <laughs> like most things in life, it's, it's a little bit fuzzy. So if you're looking at these two candles here, uh, I'll draw the arrows right there. These are sort of twin kangaroo tails or double kangaroo tails or whatever you want to call it, right? But look at this. This one right here and this one right here. Now, there was a little candle in between them, but sometimes they, they happen right, you know, right after each other. And people say, well, what do I do in this case? Here's another case over here. Again, these are all rather poor because they're, they're small and, and that. These candles over here have some space. Um, let's see. These candles, too, also have a little bit of space, but they're pretty tiny. I'm not even sure if they're on a support and resistance level. But the, the important point when you're looking at a kangaroo tail and then another one happens is the relative size. Okay. So the question you want to ask yourself is which kangaroo tail is bigger? Which one's bigger? Because what my testing has shown and feel free to test this yourself in Forex tester and see if this is true. But the candle, when the second candle engulfs the, the first candle, or in other words, has a lower low and a higher high. This actually doesn't because it doesn't have a lower low. You can see the low here is 122.53 and the low here is 122.51. So it's not, doesn't have a lower low. But what I want to point out here is that the, um, it does have a higher high. You know, and, it, and it, it could have, if it just went a little bit lower, it could have engulfed this prior candle. If that second candle is bigger, I will take the trade. If the first candle is bigger and the second candle is a little bit smaller, like in this case, I will always walk away. And the reason why is interesting, but essentially what could be happening is the market is starting to push up against the tail of the kangaroo tail. So in other words, it's starting to kind of push into that support and resistance level and it's getting ready for the dam to break. Let me see if I can show you another example of this. I think it was, was it the Euro pound? No, it was one of these charts here. Let me see if I can find it for you. Wasn't the Aussie Kiwi.
Uh, actually, it might have been the yen. Was it the yen? No. I don't think it was the yen either. Hmm. Uh, don't know where it is, actually. One of these charts... Was it the euro pound? I think it was the euro pound. No, it wasn't. I keep thinking it was the euro pound. Well, let me... Uh, let me show you a pattern. So I wasn't really planning on talking about this, but I think it's it's good to talk about this in terms of the you know the big the big picture here. Okay. So uh, well, we'll go back to our chart because we were on the pat we were on the yen, right? Um, what's what will sometimes happen when the market uh, runs into a support and resistance level is it'll it'll sometimes print what I call um, a squeeze play. And what this is, is it's a trend line that is meeting a uh, support and resistance level. And you'll know that this is happening when a specific pattern happens. And if you look at two kangaroo tails in a row and the second kangaroo tail is smaller than the first, it could be that that's what's happening, that this pattern is unfolding. It's not, you know, it's not always the case, but sometimes it looks like that. So... We need to find it here somewhere. Yeah. Let's see if we can find it. Here's, here's one. Here's one. Okay. So this is kind of, uh, it probably looks better on the, on the one hour. But essentially what, you're, what you see here is a pattern like this where there's a trend line that catches the candles and it's pushing them up against the support and resistance level. So see how that's happening here? If you stepped out and went to a higher time frame, what you might see is something like a kangaroo tail with these candles and then another smaller kangaroo tail with these candles. And so if you see a kangaroo tail and then immediately after a smaller kangaroo tail, which is moving towards the stop loss, where your stop loss would be if you took a trade, it could be that this is what's happening. The market's squeezing up against that zone and it's getting ready to pop and go to the other side. Now, in this case, it failed uh, and, and failed to pop. And it's not really a very good example. If this were a better example, this bullish candle here actually would have gone all the way to the zone and this bullish candle would have gone all the way to the zone. And then this third one was the, the final touch there before it failed. But this is the kind of pattern that um, scares me when I see that uh, because when I see two kangaroo tails, I know that it could be that's what's going on. It's not always the case, but it could be part of the reason why the candles are starting to unfold that way. So does this help, guys? Does this make any sense in terms of, you know, when you get double kangaroo tails? I want to talk about one more way to trade kangaroo tails if we have the time. I think we do. I think we do have a few more minutes. <coughs> All good? We can keep going then. Okay. There's another way to trade these, uh, which is really fun. And it's perfect if you're in a uh, trend. So if the market's trending, it's going in one direction. And it's like, let's find a market that's really going right now. So for example, not really the Euro Yen or the Euro Aussie. Not really that one. Uh, not really the Euro CAD either. Well, here's one actually. Um, so let's say that we wanted to trade this kangaroo tail right here, or, or at least we had noticed it. Now, again, this doesn't have a whole lot of space. You can pull the little edge of this kangaroo tail all the way across until it hits here, but it's not really a, an ideal kangaroo tail. The low of the kangaroo tail is at 1.4693. The low of the next candle is at 1.4687. So that is six pips lower. That may have been just enough to trigger me. Usually I'd put my uh, sell order a few pips below there and it may or may not have been triggered there. But when you see this happening, this gives you an opportunity to take, yeah, I'll look at some current ones. I'm, right after I do this Mohit, um, let's look at the live trade. Put your charts in that you wanna see. Post your charts in the chat box if you'd like to see them. Basically, 
what you do here, guys, is if the market goes um, to your stop loss level before it triggers your entry, you can actually reverse it. And this looks to be a, an excellent example of, of that. And if you think about it, this is why it's called a busted kangaroo tail. The reason why this works is you're, you're trading off of support and resistance. So if you believe in the concept of support and resistance, and you believe that the charts have a memory, and you believe that this is where the market's likely to bounce, if it goes there, it prints a reversal pattern like the kangaroo tail, and it doesn't bounce, then it means it's going to break. And it's probably going to break rather violently, and it's probably going to go pretty quickly. It's a breakout trade. So that's one way to trade these if you do see the market take out the stop loss price, which I believe has already happened here, 1.4755 and 1.4756. It hasn't. It still needs to go another pip uh, to take out the stop loss price, but that, that's a, a pretty sure bet to do that. So this is an example of what we would call the a breakout. It's a busted kangaroo tail. Okay. All right. So let me just see. Um, so there's a live Canadian dollar one hour at resistance right now. Let's take a look. If there's any other trades you want to see or any other pairs you want to see, I'm happy to look at those before we shut it down. Yeah, okay. So this is at resistance. This would be one that I would not take as a reversal. The reason why is we've had three touches in relatively quick succession Thursday, Friday, and um, and today, which is Monday, obviously. Uh, I And because you have two really bullish, really bullish candles right up against resistance, uh, even if this, this candle is going to close in a few minutes, right? Even if this candle closes as a true kangaroo tail, it's probably not good enough to take. Um, and, and the reason why is multiple touches in quick succession equals breakout and big bullish candles right up against uh, resistance also equals breakout. This to me is much more likely to be a breakout and a continuation beyond this level than to be a reversal. So this is an example of where if it does print a kangaroo tail over the next couple of minutes, I would be looking for a busted kangaroo tail opportunity rather than the reversal here. Thanks for pointing this one out though. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, so that's how I would try. I would definitely, and the clue, there's two clues here. One, these are really bullish candles. They're the two biggest candles we've seen probably going all the way back to this candle. And certainly this one's a little bit bigger, but that's the biggest candle we've seen in the last you know, 10 or 15 candles. And the second piece is that the market keeps hitting it. The longer, the more often it keeps tagging into this level, the more likely it is to break. So hopefully that makes sense. I think someone also was looking at the pound. The pound's a bit tricky right now. It looks like it's coming down. You might have um, uh, sort of a double top here, but it really needs to clear this swing low down here, which is right around 43.32 before I would get excited about a sell down to 41.30. But yeah, it, it could be a double top here, it could be. Um, it's a little bit tricky because I have the zone drawn here, so it's like the market went up above that zone, sat there, broke through, came back up, spent a little bit of time there and just couldn't stay. This is on the daily, this is more likely to be an Acapulco trade more than anything. See how it's come down like that. And then this is what we would call a cliff candle. This is a diver. If it closes like this today, that would be a pretty good diver and a, a possible sell tomorrow. But, um, but you know, you got to watch out for some support to come in here. So yeah. Okay, guys. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for spending time here. I, I hope you have a wonderful trading week. Hope to see you back at the Naked Forex, uh, the next Naked Forex webinar. I wish you very happy trading and thanks to all of you watching the recording as well. Thanks guys. Have a good one and we'll see you soon. Take care.